The light of this virtual chalice is a symbol of our faith and a reminder of the light within. By the light of this chalice, let us hold fast to the vision of the beloved community. Our church exists to proclaim the gospel, that each human being is infinitely precious, that the meaning of our lives lies hidden in our interconnections with each other. We wish to be a church where we encounter each other with wonder, appreciation, and expectation, where we call out of each other strengths, wisdom, and compassion that we never knew we had. May it be so. Our reading today is entitled History's Road, and it's written by the Reverend Clyde Grubbs and, Mar and Reverend Marjorie Bowens Wheatley. Source of life, the road of history is long, full of both hope and disappointment. In times past, there have been wars and rumors of wars, violence and exploitation, hunger and homelessness, and destructions of this earth, your creation. We have become a global village with a growing realization of how fragile this earth is and how interconnected we are to each other and to all creation. We cannot continue to live in the old way. We must make a change, seek a new way, a way towards peace with justice and a healthy planet. Oh, great creative spirit, you have given a vision of the good and we yearn for a new way. But where are we to find the courage to begin the work? We know that a different tomorrow is possible, but how can we build it? We think of the prophets, women and men who voiced unpopular opinions, who made personal sacrifices, and sometimes lost their lives for the sake of justice. We think of Isaiah who called out to let those who are held in captivity go free, to give solace to the poor and homeless. Let us be inspired by all who work to overcome misery, poverty, and exploitation. We think of Harriet Tubman who called out to people of goodwill to join her on an underground railroad, to lift a dehumanized people from the bondage of slavery to the promise of freedom, even when it meant challenging unjust laws. Let us be inspired by those who are outlaws for freedom. We think of Gandhi, whose belief in soul force the witness to love's truth helped to overthrow the oppression of an empire and gave witness to the way of nonviolent action. Let us be inspired to become witnesses for peace. We think of Chief Seattle, who reminded us that we belong to the earth, not the earth to us. Let us be inspired by all those who work for the healing of creation of Mother Earth and all her creatures. Who are the prophets who inspire you? They may be well known or known only to you, offering personal inspiration, courage, and hope. May they join a great cloud of witnesses to a new way of life, the way of peace and justice the way of justice lived according to the way of peace, the beloved community. So may it be so. When we think of leading a spiritual life, it is usually in the context of people who have a vocation, individuals who fill their days, indeed their entire lives with prayer and devotion to the holy such as nuns who take the three religious vows of poverty, chastity, 
and obedience or the celibacy of Buddhist monks and nuns. We often get caught up in the temporal and the immediate, forgetting the eternal verity that we are children of one great love. The problem is not just a personal one because culture has progressed to a point where we imagine the human body as a machine or a computerized system where the soul has been reduced to behavior and genetic determinants. Values and purpose have been given over to experts in psychology representing, presenting as secular priests of a self-improving congregation. In the best of worlds, we can enjoy the secular because we cultivate a spiritual vision. But in the worst of worlds, the two dimensions of spiritual and secular have become split into egoistic secularism and defensive religious demagoguery. However, if we can reconcile our secularity and spirituality, the two might enjoy qualities of the soul. Because our spiritual life needs the everyday soul stuff of ritual, story, image, and memory. Just as our secular lives need vision, reverence, service, and commitments offered by spiritual sensibility. However, it is odd that after thousands of years of literature and spiritual example, it's necessary to remind us that spirituality is found in everyday life. Spirituality is alive and well. As people regularly go on retreats where silence and solitude help get in touch with the sacred. Others attend workshops and conferences with spiritual themes. Even pop culture reflects the spiritual renaissance as movie storylines focus on the way life threatening illnesses or challenges to love and friendship can become the impetus for spiritual journeys. Television characters grapple with ethical issues as they raise families and cope with crises on the job. Moreover, a freelance form of new age spirituality can be found in every segment of society. We are in a spiritual renaissance that is characterized by an unprecedented amount of sharing resources among a global populace that enables individuals to widen and deepen their spiritual journeys. Sometimes people get the mistaken notion that spirituality is a separate department of life, but rightly understood, it is a vital awareness that pervades all realms of our being. Ralph Waldo Emerson said it best when he reminds us that the highest dwells within us and every part and particle is equally related to the soul of the whole. Therefore, each day of our lives is spiritual if we open ourselves to the fullness of its flow. We have daily encounters with signs that point us to the presence of spirit in the world around us. The signs have most often come from pop culture and books, but spiritual literacy is the ability to read the signs written in the text of our own experiences. Direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder in all cultures is one of the sources affirmed to draw from in a Unitarian Universalism. It moves us to a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. The words and deeds of prophetic men and women which challenge us to confront powers 
and structures of evil with compassion, justice, and the transforming power of love. Wisdom from the world's religions, which inspires us in our ethical and spiritual life. Jewish and Christian teachings, which call us to respond to the love of the divine by loving our neighbor as ourselves. Humanist teachings, which counsel us to heed the guidance of reason, the results of science, and warn us against idolatries of the mind and spirit. Spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions, which celebrate the sacred circle of life that instructs us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. Life itself is a sacred adventure that causes many to define spirituality as a way of being in the world, a holy longing, a yearning to know the meaning of our lives, to have a connection with the transpersonal. Theologian Daryl May informs that spirituality is an awareness of the more than meets the eye in our daily lives. It is the very core of our being, linking us to our deepest values and desires. Everything from cooking, hobbies, creative arts, and work can be important steps toward spiritual meaning. We can experience intimations of the divine in a lover's embrace, a rainbow, a baby's smile, a friend's forgiveness, or the selfless service of a volunteer. However, a spiritual perspective is perhaps most evident in our relationships. Our spirits soar when we work with others on a common cause. In Psalm 133, we read, and I quote, how very good and pleasant it is when kindreds live together in unity. End of quote. South African philosophy expresses it with the word Ubuntu, meaning I am because you are. Literally, a person is a person through other people. That nebulous concept of common humanity and oneness. However, we see so many examples in today's world that would have us doubt that belief. The walls dividing people have gotten taller and the chasm between the haves and the have nots has grown wider. The barriers between men and women, old and young, gay and straight, black and white, continues to proliferate. Yet even in the face of these negative developments, the dream of unity persists. Author James Allen encourage us, encourages us to cherish our ideals and visions, because if we remain true to them, the outcome will be the world we dream of building. The kinship of all peoples in this age of global spirituality recognizes that we have a common stake in the survival of the planet. And soulmates, Thomas More writes, we are all made up of many worlds and each friendship brings one or more of those worlds to life. He continues saying every friendship has its own peculiar characteristics and we can access them through the spiritual practices of imagination and presence. One of the strongest places to find soul is the presence of other people that we meet at soul level. It happens whenever a dialogue takes place in which both people are truly present. Tuning in to really listen and hearing each other. Dean Shinoda Bolin writes that 
to voice something that you are feeling and put observations into words with another person who is totally present is a creative act embodying soul and love. Relationships with other people from the spiritual web form the spiritual webs of our lives, with crucial strands being marriages, partnerships, family, and friends. Moreover, if we recognize the spark of divinity within each human being, every personal interaction is encountered, is an encounter with the holy. For those who regard spirituality primarily as a journey toward wholeness, relationships are a training ground. Author Michael Ignatius informs that being human is an accomplishment like playing an instrument and it takes practice. I hardly agree with him because relationships provide us with opportunities to practice enthusiasm, gratitude, hospitality, love, play, and questing. And at the same time, they may also expose our shadow side, drawing out our anger, envy, hatred, pain, greed, and shame. These bonds constantly school us in the spiritual practice of mystery because sometimes there is no rational explanation for why and when we feel linked to another. Things and objects also have a place in our pursuit of spiritual literacy. The great Sufi teacher Hazrat Inyad Khan writes, everything in life is speaking, is audible and communicating despite its apparent silence. We tend to think of things as outside and separate from ourselves. But when we read the world of spirituality, we discover that things often set us on pathways which lead us back to the meaningfulness of our lives. Things house our feelings, memories, and connections with others. Some things have personal significance for, for us because they have been given to us or because they be, once belonged to someone that we loved. The more we look at things around us with spiritually literate eyes, the more meanings we begin to find in them. Things not only serve as mirrors of our inner quests and questions, but also as agents of change. They make connections between everyday experiences and the world of deep meaning, pointing beyond themselves to the profound helping us to see that even seemingly mundane or commercial objects can serve as spiritual facilitators. Bells, candles, and incense are traditional objects, but anything can be a spur to a richer spiritual life. Encouraging the spiritual practices of presence, openness, and wonder because they are constant reminders of the mystery of love among us. Spiritual literacy is about paying attention because expression of the divine are all around us in all forms. Remember, we are all in this together. Sri Ramakrishna reminds us that the winds of God's grace are always blowing. It is for us to raise our sails. From my heart to yours, may it be so. Let us unite in mind and heart in a spirit of prayer and reflection. The sun always shines. The sun always shines rising in the east, circling the earth over hills and valleys, its brilliance moving slowly 
steadily. The sun always shines with rays warming the backs of laborers, coaxing crops into fruition. Slowly, steadily, it moves. Bearing witness to women at work, soldiers at war, and children at play. The sun always shines from the east. Each day it comes, radiant, illuminating faces of the condemned and free, moving steadily, slowly, bringing hope to each new day. The sun always shines. Amen. May we go. We extinguish this virtual light, but not the light that dwells within. May we go forward in purposeful rhythm that we may give voice to the melody of our imaginations, the music of our souls, and all the possibilities of a just world as we might together create it. Go in peace and go shining.